Alright, so, by this time you've all been passed out a compass, and you're figuring out the parts of it, but you're wondering, do I have an azimuthal or a quadrant compass? Now, with a quadrant compass, you'll uh, notice that the bearings go from 0 all the way around to 360. Uh, however, with a quadrant compass, you have four sections that go from 0 to 90. So, for example, a bearing of north 20 west, that would put you right there. North 20 west would be the same bearing as 340. Uh, so if you're talking to somebody, uh, or your field partner, and you have different compasses, it can be slightly inconvenient, but eventually you'll get quick at making back of the back of the envelope calculations to convert between the two. Um, it really just comes down to preference. I like to use a quadrant compass because it's more old school. Um, if I'm trying to tell someone where I am, I usually say I'm north 20 east of you. I don't say I'm 20 east of you or 340 or something like that. But it's just, it's a personal preference thing. Uh, the as a mutual compass is generally more internationally used. Alright, so setting declination. Um, an important thing to keep in mind is that magnetic declination changes throughout time as a magnetic pole wanders around. In general, it hangs out around Hudson Bay, but it's never exactly in the same point for a long period of time. So always be up to date on your magnetic declination, where you're going. If you're unsure about what the declination is in your area, you can always just set your compass to zero declination, and when you get back from the field, you can everything. However, that is a hassle. So um, try and figure out what the modern declination is, and you can find that just by doing a quick Google search or going to usgs.gov. So in our area in Seattle or Washington in general, um, in 1995, when this image was created, it was about 20 degrees, 21 degrees. Right now, our magnetic declination is about 17. So this figure is out of date. Uh, so you want to know what? Uh, how do I how do I declinate this compass right here? So we are about 17 degrees northeast for our magnetic declination. So that means that magnetic field lines are putting our compass about 17 degrees more east than they need to be. So to correct for that, you need to make your compass move 17 degrees to the west. So if we zoom in to the compass more, um, see, I put my thumb in a screw, and as I rotate the screw, it turns the bezel on the outside. So what I do is I just rotate it around until it's at 17, like that. And what that did is it pushed 0, 17 degrees, on the west side of the compass. Now, at this point, you're probably realizing that north, south, east, and west. Oh, wait, the east and west are flipped. What's up with that? So, the reason they are flipped around is because the Brunton compass is directional. It gives you a bearing of an object relative to where you are. So, to practice this, keep in mind where north, south, east, and west are supposed to be and uh, point at something in the room. So, say, I'm going to point at whatever is to the left of me, and as I move my compass to the east, from my perspective, what the compass does is even though they're flipped, it still points to the east. So, give that a try, get your compass out, point at something, and move it, move the compass in the east or west, and you'll see that the white arrow does go to the correct quadrant of your compass. Um, you just have to, if it's not obvious, just have faith in the button that it is giving you correct information. But, um, so yeah, if you want to know where something is to you, then you need to start getting uh, taking bearings. So to sight with the compass, there are several things you can do. There's a few different, basically, strategies for sighting with a compass. 
So keep in mind, we'll be using the north arrow, which is the white arrow. Now there are two techniques you can do. Both techniques use the axial lines through the compass, meaning the line on the mirror, the line through the peep window, uh, the peep sight, and uh, the fold sight. Now to uh, take a bearing like this down here, this is a very comfortable way to take a bearing. Uh, what you would do is you pull your long sight up at about 45 degrees relative to the bottom of the compass. And then you bring your window up at an angle that's equivalent to the long sight. And then you have an image of your long sight in your mirror. Now what you do need to do next is look at the circular level and put the air bubble in the center of the level. That means your compass is perfectly horizontal and your needle is properly balanced. And also, whatever you look at, that is, along the hinge line or the axial line, is now at the bearing your compass tells you. So this is telling me that the camera is north 10 east of me. So I'm reading this directly off the compass bezel and everything is lined up. Now, an important thing to keep in mind, if you are pointing at something using the long sight, that you want to take a bearing using the white arrow. However, if I were to flip the compass around like this, which is the next method we'll talk about for sighting, what I'm looking at um, to get a bearing from me to that object, I have to now read the black line, the black needle. So the second technique that we're talking about, the compass is now reversed, so I'll be using the black line. I use this for sighting something at a great distance that I want to be very accurate. However, this is a lot more complex. So to do this, I'm going to utilize the peep window and then the hole in the mirror right here and the bubble again. But this time, I am going to read the bubble backwards using the mirror. So what I do this way is I look at an object, a mountain peak off in the distance, through the hole, through the peep hole and the hole in the mirror. And while I'm doing that, I am also looking at the mirror to see the bubble. So now I can see the circular bubble at the bottom of the compass, and now it's level. So I know whatever I'm looking at is on an exact horizontal plane away from me, meaning it's at the same elevation for the most part. Uh, and I can take an exact bearing. Now, if it's kind of hard to read it, this is when that little white button we talked about, I just locked it, pushing that button right there. So what I can do now is read off what the compass says, and I know it's exactly what it said when it was this way because I locked the needle. And then, yeah, that's the second technique. So when you're utilizing triangulation, I like to use this method most. However, if it's something uh, closer up, I'll use this method. But keep in mind, if you're using this method, long sight out, you're going to read the white arrow. If you flip the compass around, you want to read the black arrow.